not sure I'd go quite as far as saying that I'm going to tell you how things should be trusted, but I'm going to tell you how to make them entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to start this talk with an, a nice slide with a definition of Internet of Things, but it turns out that if you search for Internet of Things definitions on the Internet, you get either really overdone utopian visions of the future connected <laughs> smart devices, or you get Let's see if I can get this to work. Or you get things plus internet equals something. <laughs> and um, things plus internet equals money for a lot of people, including my company. Uh, it's a big business opportunity. If you're an optimistic tech person, you're thinking about things being smart and connected and maybe green because you'll be able to use less power because you'll know more about when you need to have things on. If you're a little bit more skeptical technical person who has maybe used a device made by people who didn't think about long-term support, then you're going to have some other things in mind. <laughs> if you care about privacy, you'll have different things again. If you're my friend Beth, you're going to be thinking about murder. In fact, uh, this, this, I, I highly recommend you find the YouTube video of Beth Flanagan's uh, 2014 OzCon keynote. Uh, we, uh, be, when she was prepping for the talk, we all went out for dinner and we spent a lovely evening thinking about how everything in your house was going to murder you. The toaster was the most convoluted one, I think. I was uh, recently reminded of, of this excellent phrase, popular among uh, people like me who work in security, which is the internet of other people's things, <laughs> referring to the fact that uh, if you have a bunch of things with no updates and maybe not very good support, then uh, you have a lot of access to a really nice botnet with a lot of new and exciting toys. We should share, right? That's, that, that's what this is all about. So, I could give a pretty standard security talk on how the Internet of Things is broken, how we should fix it, how we could maintain it, how it would be awesome, but I do that stuff at work. So instead, I'm going to give you a talk about building a militia with your Internet of Things for home defense. <laughs> and, and just so we're clear, this is a, a do not try this at home kind of talk. Most of these ideas are terrible. Maybe some of them you could use in an interesting way, but I really don't want this to turn out like the Joel Plaskett song that starts with, oh no, what have I done? And the chorus goes, but everybody's screaming murder, 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 murder. So yeah, don't do this stuff. So I already had a most excellent introduction. I'm Terry. That didn't really tell you too much about why I would know anything about the militia, which is even more confusing when you consider that I'm from Canada. Obviously not a whole lot of experience with building militias. We're a very peaceful country. However, I'm uh, in the middle of a green card process and I had to fill out all this paperwork. And one of the forms you fill out when you're immigrating to the States asks you a whole bunch of really important questions like, did you help the Nazis commit genocide in 1941? Do, did, do, have, you, have you murdered anyone? No, no, sadly, wasn't alive for that one. We'll find other ways. Did, have you murdered anyone? I have not murdered anyone, even with my internet things yet. <laughs> we, we'll, we'll hope this will be a forever sort of thing, no. Uh, and one of the questions is, do you have military, paramilitary, or weapons training? And of all this like huge list of questions, that was the one I had to say yes to because I took a karate class. I'm really bad at it. And I, well, that, that's a good point, too. So I can use a Chinese broadsword really, really badly. And I took a gun safety lesson with a friend, so I can shoot a gun, but I can't hit the broad side of the barn. So clearly, in the eyes of the US government, I have paramilitary training, so I'm totally qualified to give this talk. <laughs> and as I said, I do have a PhD in horribleness, or really web security. Uh, this does mean that I spend a lot of time thinking about how to misuse, abuse, and subvert things to do things they're not supposed to. So I'm at least qualified for that part of things. And when I proposed the talk, 
I wasn't really doing any Internet of Things stuff, but since then I've gotten sort of glommed into doing Internet to, of Things security for my group at Intel. Uh, obviously, given the horribleness of this talk, these are my opinions. They do not reflect the will of Intel. <laughs> so before I get into the devices, I'm going to introduce a game. This is going to be a fun game you're all going to want to play. Um, I'm going to talk about a bunch of different devices. I'm going to give you some things that are interesting about them in terms of ways you can abuse them that the manufacturers never intended. I'm betting some of you are going to come up with better ways to abuse them than I already have. But since we've got a pretty short talk, the game is at the end of each section, I'm going give to you, give you a few minutes of, of uh, people answering, but you've got to explain your, your idea in five words or less. So five words to explain how your internet thing is going to be the general of your new internet thing, militia, army, whatever. I don't know anything about military. So let's talk about fridges. So what's cool about the fridge? It, it, it's cold. <laughs> it, it does keep things literally cold. That is very important. However, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's my grandmother's dog. You can see he's wearing little booties because it gets so cold that it, if he, you make him walk outside, he just sits down on the driveway and cries until you carry him. This makes it really hard for him to go pee. <laughs> Um, so yeah, fridges, not as cold as Canada, but still pretty cold. <laughs> your basic fridge has some basic temperature sensors. Your smart fridge is clearly going to know everything about you and how you eat and how much you weigh and everything else. So there's some, some potential for some other cool stuff there. Not literally cool, but figuratively. But the best thing about fridges is they have power. They have lots of power. They're not like little <laughs> sensor devices like my smartwatch or whatever that can't even last a whole day some days if I'm doing too much stuff. The fridge has got like a dedicated circuit and a giant ass plug. We can do things with this. <laughs> In fact, you've got like a lot of Wi-Fi signals coming into your house and maybe you're not super pleased with them. Hulk Fridge can solve this problem for you. <laughs> you don't like your neighbor. You know, you want to make sure that your Wi-Fi signal is stronger than his. You get a ham radio license. Jamie can tell you all about that if you don't, don't, don't know about uh, the joys of having a ham radio license. Um, Hulk Fridge is, is, is in your court. He will take those things out. He will find ways. But power isn't always about strength. So Hulk Fridge is also Bruce Banner Fridge. <laughs> Bruce Banner Fridge has power all the time and can use it to think. So Bruce Banner th Fridge can take all this information from these other things, process it, use it, come up with good strategies. This is pretty awesome, especially a lot of us trying to be green don't leave computers on all the time or you have very low powered servers. Or maybe you just want something a little bit more powerful with built-in cooling, because, you know, it's pretty <laughs> awesome. Fridges are better at cooling than your servers are. <laughs> so, five-word game time. Any, anyone recognize this? <laughs> it, it, it's in the Mozilla offices. So, five words. Five words or less. What's an awesome thing you can do with your fridge? Anyone got one? I totally distracted you with the Hulk thing, didn't I? <laughs> That, that, that is a good one. Store your beer. That, that's good. Not, not super defensive, except unless you're like shaking it up and throwing it at people. Maybe, maybe with a catapult in the fridge, we could do this. <laughs> Ooh, there you go. Interfere with everyone. <laughs> Crash your neighbor's drone. Oh, I like that. I like this. There we go. All right, so let's talk about something else. Smart light bulbs. Smart light bulbs are sort of awesome. I mean, they've got power, but, well, only sometimes. You know, by the power of Grayskull, but then you're wimpy the rest of the time. So maybe with the smart light bulbs, they're going to have power all the time, but with a, modern with, with a current light bulb, 
maybe not so much. So what's more awesome about light bulbs, which is that they're everywhere. You've got a light bulb in probably like every room in your house and, and the inside of your fridge, although that one's probably not smart. You've got light bulbs on the outside of your house. That's a lot of potential. So what could we do with all these light bulbs? I've got a mm -hmm. Transfer information through our circuitry by filtering. Ooh, uh, nice. I like that one. So, so the, the, the five words was transmit information surreptitiously by flickering. So on the flickering front, I'd like to um, use my light bulb as a way to encourage my house guests to leave. <laughs> So sometimes you have someone, you're, you know, your, your cousin Sophia comes over and she's like, wow, this is really great. I love staying at your place. It's so much nicer than the hotel. And then she's been there a month and a half and you're like, it's time to go. And I, I really had this like in a book or something, the suggestion that you go and unscrew the light bulb a little bit so it'll flicker and give her headaches and then it won't be nicer than staying at a hotel and she'll leave. Uh, who comes up with this stuff other than me? So, you know, that's the thing you can do right now. But your modern light bulb can take this to a new level. Your modern light bulb knows exactly where Cousin Sophia is because she's got like a smartwatch or a step counter or a phone. Step counters are great because you wear them all the time, right? You want to get every single step. So it can, the flickering can follow her around the house. Anywhere she tries to sit, that flickering is happening. And then, you know, you get the sound system in on it. Maybe you have a little buzz, you know, there's, there's mosquitoes going by Cousin Sophia. I don't know if she'd believe that in my place because I've never seen one, but. Or you can get the smart meter into the game. So then when Cousin Sophia gets into the shower and you can tell that the power's gone up because your, your, your uh, water heaters come on, you can turn it off. <laughs> Or you can just turn off the lights and leave her in the dark, in the dark, dark shower, which is always fun. You can, uh, we, we actually have connected alarm clocks in my house. You, now none of you are ever going to want to stay with me. I'm buying a new house. It's really big. You should stay for next year. It'll be fun, I promise. <laughs> uh, we actually have connected alarm clocks. So, you know, you could tweak the time on the alarm clock so it's, She's waking up an hour earlier, and then when she hits snooze, it only lasts for five minutes, but it says it lasted for 10, and then when she hits snooze again, it lets her oversleep. You can be a jerk. You don't want her to miss her, her flight out, though. <laughs> All right, so you've had a little bit of time to think. I've probably distracted you with Cousin Sophia. This, this is a light bulb filled with copper. <laughs> it's a friend of mine in Albuquerque who took this picture. So five words or less. Terrible thing to do with your light bulbs. How are your light bulbs defending your home? The light bulb is watching you. The light bulb is watching you. Very good. Very pervasive. Overload it for explosions? Overload it for explosions. Oh, I'm so glad someone got that one. Because you can just, like, you're everywhere. You know, you, you saw the burglar go into your house. He's not coming out without some scratches. You can do this thing. Make intruders think it's haunted. Oh, I need to buy a really big mansion, and then maybe I shouldn't think about these things. So let's talk about the television. So what's awesome about the television? So the obvious thing that's awesome about the television is it has a giant screen. And that's pretty awesome, but most things that involve displaying things on a screen are like normal television operation. So you know, that's cool. And maybe one of you can think of a good way to use that for, for home defense. But I'm going to try to think a little sideways. So what else is cool about the, sorry, I'm very Canadian. <laughs> so what else is cool about, uh, about, about the television is that it's really central. You're, usually, you have it placed pretty, pretty high traffic area in your home. People will tend to sit near it. People will tend to sit near it for a long time, which, uh, means that not only is it good for Samsung to spy on you or whoever, but also for you to spy on other people in your house. You want to know what your kids are doing? You want to keep an eye on that babysitter? You don't need a nanny cam. You have a smart TV. It's got a built-in thing so you can make gestures at it and tell it to shut up. It listens to your voice so in, in just in case you're sending a voice command. So therefore, it is optimally placed to be a spy. Black Widow television is the television for your, your home. 
The only problem is that, you know, with spies, you're never really sure who they're working for. <laughs> so, five minute, if five word game. Anyone got it, got a great use for the television? Watching you, watching me. Watching you, watching me. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> Come on, there's got to be some way we can use it for signaling, right? Mega blasting sound. Ooh, mega blasting sound. Very good. Someone breaks into your house. You can see them, and the burglars generally are going to come towards your nice, fancy new smart TV, right? So, good, good, good for triggering. Spoil audience measurement, random thing that you guys remember. Oh, foil audience measurement through random tuning. I, I like it though. That's very clever. Not not just defending your home in a physical way, but defending your home in a privacy way. That is pretty cool. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about the thermostat? So, yeah, the thermostat, it controls the temperature. It's got some sensors. That's pretty cool. But in terms of home defense, it's not, it doesn't seem like it's going to be the most useful thing because, you know, you're in your home. You don't want it to be 30 bazillion degrees, and you don't want it to be freezing. And well, I mean, maybe that's fine when you're not home, but you also don't want it to light your home on fire or freeze your pipes. So you know, there's, there's only sort of a limited range of things you'd think it can do. But what about what it knows? Your thermostat knows where, when you're sleeping. It knows when you're awake. It knows when you're not home. It probably doesn't know if, if you've been bad or good. So in a traditional sense, we, we just had burglary, burglary helper. That's, that's where we're going here. So in a traditional sense, this is a pretty useful thing, right? Because not only can you use it for controlling your temperature, but you can also use it for figuring out when it's appropriate to deploy the Roomba so it won't drive you crazy. Or if you're thinking a little more defense-wise, you can use it to deploy the Doomba. <laughs> I really tried to find one with lasers, but this was too funny to pass up. So um, yeah, because it knows where you are, and it can corroborate that a little bit with, with your smartphone, your watch, your, your whatever, maybe with the image recognition systems on your television so it can tell when someone's not you, you can, you can deploy some much stronger uh, means of defense with, with your uh, thermostat. So this one's a hard one. Has anyone got, got a uh, five word, maybe more than five word, maybe you can have 10 words for this, way to use your thermostat for home defense? Command center for IoT, that's a good one, because it's right there, it's got controls, and in the case of the Nest one, it hooks right up to your smartphone, so that's pretty cool. Thermostat plus TV to fake being home. Ooh, thermostat plus TV to th fake being home. In fact, you can get the light bulbs in on that one, too. It would be pretty good. Deploy the carpet shark army. Deploy the carpet <laughs> shark army, yes. Uh, I think that one's a, definitely a possibility. You could also use it to annoy Cousin Sophia, who's you know staying in your house, but uh, the thermostat doesn't get super involved. Yeah, so that's, that's definitely, definitely a thing you could do. You could, you could terrorize your cats. In fact, you, can you, don't even, you, you don't even need the Roomba to do that. Say you're like start, starting your like, terribly important cat video business, and your cat just doesn't do funny things enough. <laughs> so then you, you program the thermostat to, get, to, to work with the security cameras to, to determine when your cat is sitting in front of the vent and then just a little poof on his butt, that cat's gonna be a YouTube star in no time. <laughs> I'm a terrible person, also I don't have pets. Or children, it's probably better that way. Why is there a duck? Why is there a duck? You'll have to watch the YouTube video. I'm not sure it explains either, but I made it through an entire course on Android security with the promise that there would be cat, cats wearing shark costumes chased by ducks. So 
it, it's clearly, clearly worth waiting for. You should go and check it out. So, I'm sorry, are you saying you don't have pets and children now, or any more? <laughs> <laughs> the, the question is, do I, have, do I not have children and pets now or anymore? And the answer is, well, actually, anymore. But <laughs> none of the pets died of, of Internet of Things. It was much earlier. <laughs> I hear some muttering about children. I've never had children. <laughs> Create a poltergeist shower. Oh, I like that one. You can get all the things in on the action then. That's that's where we're going next. All right. So I love this. You guys are great. So next, let's talk about the smart garden. I'm really excited about this one because I'm just buying a house. We're taking possession at 5 o'clock, which is awesome, except that I'm going to be here giving another talk. <laughs> so um, I'm really hoping my boyfriend doesn't like take off with the keys and never talk to me again. Um, so the smart garden, pretty cool. Your, your typical smart garden setup is going to have a bunch of weather sensors. It's going to connect to the internet to tell whether it should bother watering, whether there's a drought going on, whether there's rain coming. It's going to have its own sensors to figure out what's, what's appropriate when. There's not much point in, in, in fertilizing if there's going to be huge rain or doing other things if there's going to be a huge wind. So it's going to have potentially a lot of sensors. And so far, the, the smart garden appliances have tended to be kind of modular, not so good at talking to each other. But you know, we're open source people. We can probably figure that out, right? So your smart garden is going to have a lot of sensors, and a lot of different sensors than your fridge did. So that's, that's cool. And here's your, here's your sprinklers. Your smart garden is going to be pretty pervasive, because often things that th a thing that people want is irrigation. So I don't know about the rest of you, but prior to my decision to, to, to join a career which would have me sitting in an office every day, I used to, uh, to spend a lot of time hiking and doing field biology work, doing uh, field naturalist work. And uh, field naturalist work teaches you that when you hear a strange hissing in the bushes, that's not a good thing. <laughs> so now that I live in suburbia, it's terrifying. I, I am like constantly startled if I walk home at night. Like some people are like, oh my goodness, you're, you're going to get assaulted. I'm thinking, oh my god, the sprinkler will kill me. It's going to bite. I'm not really good at this whole modern living thing sometimes. <laughs> so if the sprinklers are terrifying for me, let's make them terrifying for other people. <laughs> Specifically, let's make it terrifying for <laughs> the dog with that owner who never picks up. So dog poop is actually kind of awesome. I, I should have tried to find the, 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 there are like medieval tapestries that have the dog in that pose. And you can just glance at it, and you're like, that dog is doing a crap. I know. Everyone knows. This is art. Awesome. But if you can do that, so can your fridge. Your fridge can totally detect dog poop. Your fridge can totally detect dog poop. Or your, and your cameras and everything else, your computers, totally detect the dog poop and deploy the sprinkler system right at that dog's butt. You do that a few times, your lawn is no longer going to be the prime pooping place. So if you don't have any magic way to defend against your dark poops, we can always use science. And as someone who has just bought a house with a fairly substantial garden, I have one that I'd like you all to think about and possibly come up with amazing Kickstarters for me to fund when I leave here, which is that I have been told that my new garden has a bit of a problem with deer and roses. I'm pretty sure the deer are not as terrified of sprinkler systems as I am, and they don't really get down low enough to be squirted in the butt. But uh, they but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking for, for the way to keep the deer from eating my roses, Internet of Things style. So you can think about that. But has anyone got a really good five word internet garden monstrosity sprinkler horror film thing for me? 
trespasser defense, yeah. So not just the dogs, you can, you can do anything. In fact, if you have a little bit of a dispute with FedEx where they tend to throw your packages <laughs> in inappropriate places, you could have a giant loudspeaker that was like, dear FedEx, the box is here, and then flashing lights. You could be a real jerk. You could, you know, just, you, you, you want to be the grumpy grandpa with a cane getting your kids off your wall? Grumpy grandpa is totally wired in now. He doesn't even have to lift that cane. You, you, can, you can make this happen. Oh, no leaving trash. No littering. No littering in the yard. I like it. Living hell for annoying mammals. <laughs> Living hell for annoying mammals. I wondered if anyone was going to talk about squirrels. There's actually a really hilarious talk, I think it was at PyCon, on a, 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 a squirrel feeder system that involved a hose and a feeder. And uh, it turns out squirrels get used to that, but you know, there's some potential there. You can change it up with you have smart things. IoT crazy daisy attacks your deer. IoT crazy daisy attacks your deer. This, this, this has got potential. Deer should spook easily. I think they might be afraid of crazy daisies. Ooh, electric fence combined with sprinklers. You have got the murder vibe happening here. I like it. And that would definitely get my deer. <laughs> I bet they taste really good, too. <laughs> so we've reached sort of the end of the talk. I got my 10-minute warning. Normally, at this point in the talk, I would give you a call to action. But uh, these are all terrible ideas. Don't do them. However, what I'll say, have a call of thinking about things maybe is that I hope we've, the, this little chat has made you realize that there's some really interesting potential for internet things, especially if we can connect ones that maybe came from different manufacturers. Some of that potential is for evil. Some of that potential is for hilarious evil. But it's a thing to think about. And this being open source bridge, the, the usual plug is that free software, open hardware, having standards for communication all gives us a whole lot more options when we want to build our Internet of Things militia. And you can ask some questions, but I'd really want to hear how you're going to murder people with your Internet Things. So <laughs> thank you.